Thank you. We're back again. It's still Wednesday and it's still the 12th and um, this is still Senate Government Operations and sorry we're a little late here. People, we got really tied up, well, I did, in talking about our Code of Ethics bill and anyway, we won't go there now, but um, so I think that the way I would like to do this is to have this, has, we're talking about pensions here, just so that people out there realize what we're talking about. And I think that this has been a, um, a really, for me, a really interesting and um, process. And, and I, I thought that uh, because we were very clear when we set up this task force that we wanted to make sure that the, um, that the three state unions or the three unions that were impacted here were part of the a part of the task force. And so at some point, I am hoping that we have the as many of the task force members that can actually join us. Um, but knowing that they have their state jobs and their teaching jobs, what I thought we would do today is just hear from the the three um, union representatives who had their members with us on the task force to just talk a little bit about what they saw as the, the process and the, um, how it worked and so if they saw issues with it or whatever, just reflect on the process and where we are and um, how they feel about it. So um, I, believe everybody you probably know all of us so I don't think we'll take time to introduce ourselves so with that uh does do any of the three of you have um time constraints and need to get out of here first okay seeing none I'm going to start with Mike so Mike Thank you, Senator. I don't know if I ever get to go first. I appreciate that. You don't usually. That's why you do today. Welcome back, everybody. It's good to see you. It's been a long time since the last session. And uh, after the work the task force did, it seemed even longer. It, it was a very long process. But to start, I want to thank you for the work you did last session to create this task force. The, there was a very emotional response, as you remember, to the proposals last year that came out of the treasurer's office and then ultimately the house on some of the retirement issues we were facing. And our members really felt that it was important to have a voice in this process. And the legislation you passed ensured that that happened. So we are very appreciative of that. Um, without that, there would have never been buy-in to what was ultimately made for a recommendation by the task force. Um, so I really do appreciate that. The work you did really made a difference on that end. Um, with what went on with the task force, it, it was not an easy process. Yeah, everybody was emotional coming into this, especially from our side, because there's so much at stake. You know, th this is people's futures, and it was very important to them that they felt like all of our members were heard, all of the issues were considered, and we all understood what got us to where we are, whether there were mistakes that were made in investments or managing the system. Before we could make recommendations on what our members were willing to do, we need to make sure we looked at all of the issues and fully understood that. And the task force did exactly that. So the process worked as it was intended. Yeah, I remember Senator White, you saying during your committee meetings last year that you understood that the committee didn't have a tie-breaking vote, but you thought at the end, regardless, you'd get to the right point because we always do. And you were correct. Yeah, that, that was an effective way of doing it. Both sides felt heard. And I think we're walking away with an agreement that our members are comfortable with. Uh, we have met with our members um, with VSEA last night. We had a uh, membership meeting on Zoom and the feedback was positive. You know, there were questions, there were concerns, but I didn't hear any objections to the recommendations that were made. And it's been the same with the response I'm getting directly from our members. You know, there is, of course, concern. They want to make sure they understand what the recommendations mean. 
but there has been support overall. I haven't heard any objections to what was done. So I, I'm very happy in how the process went and confident that we can support this as an organization going forward. So I want to thank you again. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks to your member was great on there, Dan Trottier, who is a trooper. He was a um, very valuable member, as were all of them. So thank you, um, thanks. Thanks, Mike. I'm going to I won't tell you what Mike called me. Um, I'm going to go to Jeff. Thank you. And, and um, I'm joined uh, today by Colin Robinson. Our, oh, good. Our, uh, he's here. He's uh, but um, so first off, for the record, Jeff Fannin, uh, Vermont NEA Executive Director, thank you for having me and, and, uh, and Colin here. Um, we are, uh, it, it's been a long process as Mike alluded to. Uh, we started more than a year ago on this journey and it was a journey. And uh, thank you for the passage of, of Act 75 to, um, allow the task force to come into being, to allow uh, the, all voices to be heard. There were public meetings, as you know, Senator White. Um, uh, there, were, uh, a, there was a lot of input. Um, and we, just so you know, the, the process we uh, had at Vermont and EA is we, we wrapped our three task force members, Molly, Kate, and Andrew. I, I say that so quickly, Molly, Kate, and Andrew. They seem as if one person, right? They're, they became one to us, Molly, Kate, and Andrew. Um, but uh, Molly Stoner, uh, Kate McCann, and Andrew Emrich were the three task force members from Vermont and EA, and they were wonderful people. Um, I, I knew some of them uh, before, but uh, they all got to know each other, and they got to know you all. Uh, I will say this uh, in a call we had was it last night, they all thanked you to a, a call of a larger group of Vermont NEA folks explaining the, 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 uh, the package um, and thanked you uh, for your hard work, knowing that legislators, they had a whole, whole new appreciation for the time and commitment all legislators put in. Uh, it was really eye-opening for them in that regard. But as to the, so they thanked you for that and, and they shared that with our members more broadly. Um, and I, I will say that the process was healthy, cathartic in a way, uh, and we got to a place where uh, I think they understood the challenges the system faced, that they wanted to preserve it, that um, there were certain things they were able to do and th certain things they didn't think they could do, and we wrapped them around with other members to counsel them, to guide them, to, set, to be a sounding board um, so that in real time they could understand things that you were discussing or the task force was discussing, whether they would, they would be acceptable to a larger membership. Um, well, not perfect. Um, it was a design to give them the support they needed to advance their work on the task force. And I think it worked. So not only did the task force work as a group, the legislative task force, but our, our group uh, was able to do its work to support them and, and therefore the ultimate work of the task force. Um, so we're pleased that the process played out as it did. Uh, we worked, uh, you know, and made sure that we kept each other informed, all, all the task force members, the VSEA folks, the troopers and you, uh, the lines of communication were open and that was good. Um, so I think we got to a place where uh, not perfect, but uh, we didn't let uh, perfect be the enemy of the good. And I think that that's where we are today. And uh, I want to thank you all here for starting that good work in the Senate last year. It just seems like decades ago at this point. But um, and Colin, it, what did I miss or anything like that? No, I would just say, <clears throat> you know, I think that... Um, the ultimate package that was voted on by Senator White and the other members of the task force is really impactful. You know, I think we we believe that the package that is being presented to this to this committee going forward is going to have a positive long term impacts on our pension system to make sure that there's a secure retirement for teachers, um, 
for decades to come and and shoring up their health benefits as well um, while making sure that it is is fair and equitable for everybody so um, it was a it was a process that that ultimately worked, and there was a lot of a lot of hard work and a lot of time that went into um, this ultimate process um, and this ultimate package that is going to be before this committee. Thank you, um, Anthony. Did you have a question? You're muted. Sorry about that. Don't take this the wrong way, but I have to ask this question because I've heard from some people who said. On Facebook, there's like a thousand people who signed up on a page, you know, teachers and staff who are not happy with what what happened. I'm just wondering, you know, you, what's my response to them? Does that question make sense? It, 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 it does. Certainly, there are a lot of voices out there. There's no question about it. And some, some uh, we, we heard from some of those throughout and more recently, and, and uh, we acknowledge that uh, you know, there are some out there that would have no changes made, but we worry, right. we want to ensure that the teacher retirement system is healthy and vibrant today and as well as tomorrow and well into the future. So um, we think now was, an op was the best moment in time to, to, uh, to reach this package, to, co to come to agreement. And um, I think, again, it, it's not everything I wanted, let's just say that, right. um, but I'm sure the same could be said for Senator White here on the call. Um, and, 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 but as Colin pointed out, it is what the best thing we could come up with today. We think it's important to move forward as a, as a, as a single unit and we could all pick it apart. But the problem is if you start, you peel one thread, it's all going to come undone. And I don't think that's advisable at this point. Okay. So to the folks who are there and there, there, there are several, there's no question about it. Um, it required some hard work, and several of the people acknowledged that Molly, Kate, and Andrew did that hard work. Um, and this is what they are recommending, their, their colleagues. So I think that's I think really the important. Folks, I, I think the folks that I heard from, go back to what you said, I think they, they wanted nothing to change. You know, they, they would said, you know, contract is a, a pension, it's a contract, and you shouldn't be able to change it, and so, which is sort of an easy, you know, it's an easy thing to say, but obviously in the situation we're in, it was impossible to like not change anything. The, the, the one thing I would say, Senator, is, is perhaps, you know, the, the notion, Molly, Kate, and Andrew were members. They're teachers in the system. Right. They, they, they were from, uh, Andrew's from uh, the uh, Mad River Valley, Kate McCann's from U32, and Molly Stoner's from uh, down in Brattleboro. They, they, they had a, a cross-section of years of service, uh, teaching in middle school, elementary school, uh, and, and high school. Um, we thought they represented well the membership at large, and this is what they're recommending. So their colleagues sat down for, seven, what, seven months, Senator White, right? this is about seven, eight months, and really worked and dug into the numbers and the details, and this is what they recommend. Uh, at the end of the day. So I think the hard work was done by the members who, who are, uh, think this is the right, right way to go. Okay, appreciate it. If I, I can just add one thing that, I, I think when we first started, there were a lot of people, including people on the task force who, who simply did not understand the dire straits that we were in, that we are in, and that felt that we really didn't need to do much just a little tinkering maybe. And through the hard work of those eight months of the, re the union representatives on there, understanding where we are. And um, I mean, there was a ton of stuff presented to them. And so their deep understanding of where we are and what we had to do is uh, reflective of the package that came forth. And a lot of people out there, most people out there, were not privy to all of that information and have not read everything that's on the website because that would be um, take them two months, but to read it. But so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out that they they came to this conclusion because of their deep understanding of where we were. I just will say that and 
Okay, Colin. I, I, I didn't want my question to be to me to, to present uh, the idea that I'm I'm, I'm unhappy. Yeah. I yeah. just trying to get your response to your response that you voice is pretty similar to what I would voice myself. And okay. Senator Senator Polina would also say, right? I, I think you all know, and we all know, and and I think everybody acknowledges this is a complicated issue, right? right? And that's what you were just speaking to, Senator White. And we recognize that we have a lot of education that is going to be continuous, right? As it relates to the the substance of this, as it impacts specific individuals, as it um, shores up um, the the pension system going forward. Um, and the other thing is, I think obviously. You are all aware of this from hearing from your constituencies. You know, our schools and our school staff and specifically teachers, it's a really challenging, incredibly difficult time in our schools right now. Sure. Um, and so, you know, this conversation uh, came at a really, really, really challenging time. And, and this year, quite frankly, is probably the hardest of the three years. So um, I just wanted to sort of voice and state what's perhaps an obvious point as it relates to this issue in this particular moment. Sure. Thank you. Um, Steve? Thank you, Senator. Um, I think what I would say is, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm not aware of a page with a thousand people on it, but if you think about it, there, there's close to 20,000 members of all three unions. So you're bound to have um, some percentage of that group of, that, of those folks in a democratic union um, not agree with the final outcome, uh, just like you would in, in your communities when you, you, know, you pass a bill and 52% of, of your constituents support it and 48 don't. Uh, that's just the nature of democracy. Um, but I think what I would say is that one of the major lessons that I hope is learned from this process is um, something that we say often at VSEA and the labor movement is um, nothing about us without us. Um, and that really was the key to the legislation that the Senate uh, put forward and the House eventually adopted. Um, you, if you want a, if you really want to know how to solve the problems facing state government, going to the frontline workers, the teachers, the troopers, the state employees, and including them in the discussion and including them in the process will get you to the result you're looking for. Um, imposing things on high doesn't usually work out successfully. And so the Senate really set that uh, process up to be an inclusive one, to be a democratic one, to be one where people felt they had equal power at the table. Uh, and that's, that's the backbone of, of, of labor. Uh, I think I also would like to say that uh, Senator White uh, was a, an outstanding a co-chair <laughs> um, who at many times held the whole thing together. Um, and I really appreciate that. And I know our members do. There are many times when we all just wanted to throw it up, throw up our hands and walk away. Um, but we were able to talk to Senator White and work our way through the problem. And I, I wanna say that we really appreciate that. Um, I also, uh, I, I think this proposal <clears throat> the, the basic premise of this proposal for, for the state employees is that our members did not want to have to work longer for a less secure retirement. And I think if you look at the, the uh, outcome of this process that included um, Leona Watt, who is a senior probation officer in Springfield, well-respected across state government uh, for <clears throat> her work there, um, and Eric Davis, who you know, is a uh, retirement mathematical whiz um, and is the vice chair of the retirement, um, uh, the retirement board. Um, they were able to work together to craft a proposal that, um, you know, it's not 100% harmless. There are going to be some people who are going to have to put more money out of their paycheck into the pension system because normal costs of the system are increasing and we have to do our share. Um, but one thing that's really was really important principle for us, would, and in, in the end, it turned out to be um, something we could achieve is that the increased contributions in, among state employees um, is a progressive, contrib progressive contribution increase. So the dietary aid at the veterans home who I constantly talked about last year, 
making 12 bucks an hour, you know, she's not going to have to pay more money out of her pocket, but those making, you know, more than $75,000 a year, um, will have to pay a little bit more. So it's, it's a, there's a, there's a fairness there. Um, but the real principle that we really wanted to achieve, which was, was one of equality between the employer and the employee. So employees under our uh, agreement will contribute $15,000 more, uh, $15 million more annually in contributions. And the state of Vermont will contribute $15 million more in contributions. So um, in, um, in a money above the, uh, the ADEC. So that principle of equality was achieved. Um, and that was really important. I do want to just, uh, there's two more things I just want to say. One is well, there is some unfinished business. Um, we have, uh, an, according to the agreement, till April 15th to put together a plan for what we call Group G, which would be a plan to bring Vermont into a, 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 to a alliance with um, the other New England states and provide our correctional officers and the nurses at the psychiatric care hospital a 20-year retirement at age 55. We're the only state in New England that does not do that. This, this cannot, this has to get done. This absolutely has to get done. Uh, our systems in those two pl places of employment are spinning out of control and on the verge of collapse because of the lack of staff. So we have got to get that done. And, and I appreciate that the commission, that the task force um, has given us the time to work with Treasurer Pierce to get that proposal um, together to make sure it doesn't adversely affect the pension system um, and to make sure that we can, um, we can get that into the final uh, agreement. Uh, the, the correctional officers and the nurses are counting on us to do that. I also would like to thank the, somebody who I, at VSEA we affectionately know, affectionately call the state lady. And that is the um, way in which Senator Kitchell was introduced uh, to many homes when she was a, when she was a social worker, uh, perhaps a member of the VSEA. Um, she just did an outstanding job uh, helping us understand the budget implications and all of the fiscal um, information that we really needed uh, in order to make this work. Um, so we were grateful to Senator uh, White for holding this together and making sure we didn't lose our minds. Um, but we're also very grateful to Senator Kitchell uh, for lending her expertise to the process and helping us understand the budget, um, the budget consequences. That was a really important part of the process and we very much appreciate it. So, so I, I, I think on that point, I'll just, uh, I'll, 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 I will uh, arrest my case, but really just say thank you, thank you, thank you for setting up a process that included people and for, um, and for giving us a chance to highlight um, the great work of our members, Leona and Eric. Thank you. So um, I think that um, we got a little into a little more detail there than I had thought. So um, I was going to have Chris talk about, Chris or Becky talk about, and I don't know what your timeline is here, Becky. I know that you have some constraints on your time um, and so what I'm going to suggest perhaps is that um, I was going to have you talk about Group G. We don't need to do that anymore because um, I think Steve has talked about Group G unless uh, people have questions about. So maybe, maybe what we'll do is we don't have time, I think, today to go through the three. Wait, Jay, wait one second, Senator Clarkson. We don't have time today to go through the three, um, the three packages, which is what I had hoped we would be able to do. Um, so I think that what we'll do is put off going through the, the um, packages until um, next week. Um, and maybe we can just, I see, I think that Senator Clarkson maybe had a, another question about Group G. Um, 
And then um, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that there is a public hearing on Tuesday night. I sent that out to everybody. So I hope that you all are notifying your members because that's uh, the only time we could do it. And we promised that there would be another public hearing after the um, after we had the packages completed. And people can uh, see the the proposals on the website. And I'm sure I'm sure you've sent them out to everybody. So um, anyway, so Senator Clarkson, I you the Group G is a potentially new group. Group C are state uh, law enforcement. Group F in the system are the all the other state employees. DOC workers are really um, stressed and have very uh, jobs that are more similar probably to law enforcement than to the standard group F um, employee. So they wanted to have a, um, a special group set up for a new group for the, the where the um, benefits and the contributions are closer, more akin to group C than to group F. And when the actuarial reports came back, they came back suggesting that it would cost about between 30 and 35% of the employee's salary. That certainly isn't gonna happen. That's not gonna help re recruitment in any case. So we have, um, given them until April 15th, as Steve said, to come up with a package, a, a plan that will be cost neutral to the system, but that will meet their needs. And if that, if so, if they come up with that, it'll be plopped into the, to the bill whenever, wherever the bill is on April 15th or whenever they come up with it. Does that answer your question? Okay. So I am aware that it's almost 4.30 and I, I do know that um, people have other things. What committee, what is your pleasure here? Should we just wait and dive into this next week? Um, I, or do we wanna start diving in now? We won't get very far and we won't have many questions. Yes, Senator Colomar. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think we... We have it on the agenda for Friday too, don't we? Yes. Oh, oh, Friday, Friday. Yes, I'm think. I was thinking this was Friday, but yes, you're right. We do have it okay. on for Friday, and and that was the plan was then to um, get more deeply into it. Um, Senator Clarkson, thank you, thank you. Sure. Yes, thank you. We talked about a summary uh, sheet, and I looked on the pension on your committee's. Uh, Web page and uh, Becky, I assume that the final report that is up is the final report, but we don't have a kind of a. I know you have an executive summary there that, but do we have a a summary sheet that we can send out to constituents? Because uh, is Chris working on that, or Chris and Becky working on that, and when might we expect it? Is I guess one of my questions. I'll let Chris answer that because he he did prepare something. Sure. Uh, for the record, Chris Rip, Joint Fiscal, uh, there are there is a summary sheet. It's not one page. It goes on to several pages on the Joint Fiscal Office website. Um, uh, under if you go to subjects and go under pensions and state debt, you'll see it there. You'll also see the slides that um, I prepared for today, which really kind of walks you through um, at, in a very summary level all the elements of the the recommendations with the fiscal estimates that we have right now. Um, there was there was a lot of wordsmithing happening right up through the weekend, up to the task force meeting and through the task force meeting, getting the report done. And as soon as that was agreed to, we immediately pivoted to putting some fiscal summary sheets together. But the, the time constraints between nailing down the wording of the final recommendations and the end of the final task force meeting didn't allow us to, to finish all of it to put directly in the report, but there is a companion document. Great, and I, I would just for like, nor, for most of the public who aren't gonna necessarily go to JFO, could we also post it on the pensions webpage? 
because that's where people will go to look for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe we could have both the report, Gail, maybe we could have both the report and the summary work that Chris just mentioned on our reports and resources for us to easily access and the public to easily access. I see uh, Madam Chair nodding her head and she was one of the co-chairs of the pension task force. So if she's good with it, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. And I, I think I, I would be a little hesitant to send too much out to constituents at this point until we really understand what it is because even the three page summary is, I, I mean, and I do know that the uh, VSEA, the VTA and the NEA are sending out to their members their own um, summary sheets and, and the packages that were proposed by them and were accepted by the task force. So I would just, um, or just to be a little bit cautious that we don't send stuff out that in fact might not accurately reflect. Um, we can send out where they can see it, but I would, I'm not sure that we, I anyway am, would not find, uh, feel comfortable sending out um, particular information to constituents, except where to find it. I mean, because the, the packages are very complicated. They're, they're, they're very complicated, each package, and there are three different packages here. So, so, so are you saying to us that, may, that we should rely, that maybe for people who are in touch, we could say that your, your union will be sending you out the package summary? I mean, should we... Uh, have them pivot in in their request to like if it's a VSEA member or a VNEA member. We can ask them. We can tell them to do that. We can also tell them to go to the website and look at the yeah, reports no, I, and look I, I at will. the package. But but I just uh, would be careful about sending out uh, what we might decide is a summary that's shorter than the three page summary. Um, and the three, so that's, that's my only caution because I don't want, um, we don't want false information to get out there or information that's incomplete or that, uh, talks about, uh, and, and as, um, Colin said, it, this was a very, very complex and, uh, issue and the, the solutions are very complex. So. That's that's my that's my suggestion. Committee members can you can do whatever you want, of course, but it's I just don't want information to get out there that isn't accurate or complete. Heavens, we have no interest in getting incorrect information out. I just want to make it easier for our for everybody in Vermont for to access it. So that's why I requested Chris and you know, to have this all at least on your website yeah. and on ours. And if we put the report and the um, the summary sheets on our website, that would be that would be helpful, and we can direct people there. And then um, <clears throat> I'm and I have no doubt at all that the VSEA and the NEA and the VTA are not sending things out to their members. There, as Colin said, they have a or maybe it was Jeff, they have a lot of education to do yep. for their members. Got it. So, all right, so to say, I, I do apologize, Becky and Chris, for making you uh, do all the, that work. And your, your slides are always valuable, Chris, but now you don't have to do it for Friday. Well, Madam Chair, this is not the first committee that I had to present slides for, so it was good to have them in the hopper ready to go. We're going to have lots of hearings on this as we go. And uh, if, if I may, just real quick before we, before we adjourn, one of the sort of key takeaways about this, these recommendations that, that I think is beneficial not only to, to legislators to understand, but to all the members who might be watching right now is that um, this does involve, this proposal does involve reinvesting a lot of uh, sort of ADAC savings from, from changes to the pensions back into 
long-term retirement obligations. So there's commitments of the state to make additional contributions. Um, there's a recommendation that the state make a $200 million one-time contribution to the pension systems and ongoing ADAC plus payments. And the, the thing that I, that I think is most interesting about the, where the end result is, is it provides a path forward to pre-funding the two OPEBs. So that, that really secures retirement uh, healthcare benefits for people long-term and combined this package would um, reduce the state's long-term unfunded retirement liabilities by two billion with a B dollars. So that is very significant. What is it that I don't remember who it was that said a million here, a million there, and it suddenly adds up? <laughs> I think it was somebody at the federal level, but I don't remember who it was. <laughs> so anything else that anybody wants to tell us today? Um, can you be with us on Friday, Chris, Becky? Okay, I will. And uh, Jeff and Steve and Mike and Colin, you're certainly welcome to join us again on Friday. Um, we'll make sure you have an invite so that if there are particular questions about the packages, um, you can help answer them. And I'm going to send an invite to the six union members if they want to join us. I, I know they have jobs and school. So we'll just see if any of them want to join us um, to answer any questions that we might have about the, the proposals that they came up with. And um, okay. And, and thank you all of you because all of you have been so involved in this all summer and fall. We really applaud you and we're so grateful. So. Well, it, it, we, cannot, we cannot say thank you enough, I think. <laughs> it would not have happened, I can tell you, without um, the great work of Chris and- Oh, um, and thank you, everybody on this. Everybody, show. everybody, oh. but, but the, real, the real takeaway here is that people work together and, yeah. and um, people checked their political issues at the door and their personal interests, and and it it made a difference, and it it worked because of that. So, Madam Chair, may I just one thing? Uh, maybe. <laughs> it, I know you'll agree with this. It really wouldn't have worked without the help of Gail. Uh, oh yeah. We, we wouldn't have known where to go, when to be there, <laughs> what to read. So I really want I want to thank Gail for all yes. of her. For yes. Her. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Steve and everyone. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> and our, our experience with that has led me to um, the decision that we don't want to use the live transcripts because the things came by very odd. For example, when we talked about COLA, at one point it came across as Enola Gay. Um, when... Mike Pichek was talking about something that came across as bathroom design. Um, so it, it's got a lot of wishful thinking in the transcription. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you.